Hello and welcome to the Master Mind, Body, and Spirit Show. I'm your host, Matt Belair. Today's guest is an empower, empowerment advocate and contractor who has stumbled into knowledge leading to an extraordinary experience within the system of commerce and justice. As co-founder of the Empower Movement, he is dedicated to sharing his knowledge to help people truly take back their power and hold accountable those involved in agendas causing harm. He explains how men and women worldwide can hold public officials and CEOs accountable for causing widespread harm and trespassing technology. He has co-authored a new commercial liability action to solve the smart meter problem, as well as the looming 5G rollout, mandatory vaccination, and geoengineering. Welcome to the show, Cal Washington. <laughs> Thanks for having me on. It's great to be here. Yeah, Cal. So it's so great to speak with you in person. I was saying before we started here, I remember um, seeing the Empower documentary years ago now, maybe maybe three or four years ago. I'm not sure that when that came out with Josh Del Sol, and I was like, I didn't know anything about smart meters and what was going on there. And um, it was amazing because your background and and your path to get to where you are now, with especially where we are in the COVID world, it's, it's interesting to see the evolution of the InPower movement and what you're up to and the progress you've made, because I imagine it's been a very challenging road. So for people who are just getting familiar with who you are, um, do you want to give them a brief background of who you are, how you got to where you are today, and the amazing things that you're working on? Well, for all intents and purposes, I'm just a normal guy living in, in Canada, you know, first world job, family, uh, you know, member of the church, that kind of thing, played sports, played music, uh, you know, just a kind of a normal guy. And then I went through divorce and uh, that's when I uh, came face to face with the justice system. So I hadn't really been in court maybe a couple times in my life um, before that, but this now is, I was immersed in it. And um, because I was, you know, I, I was in, involved with a divorce which led to a child support um, issue. And um, it was through that immersion that I started to realize that court wasn't what I thought it was. I couldn't figure out what it was at the time. I know what it is now, but at the time I didn't know because I had this preconceived idea of what it was based on TV or whatever, whatever it was. And, um, and most of us have that, that idea that there's a, you know, it's based on truth and some, there's some kind of balance that you see those balance beams. Everybody gets that picture in their head of the justice system. They use that logo. Well, that's not what was going on in there. And, um, uh, I couldn't put my finger on it, but I didn't like it. And I, and I'm just the type of guy that just kind of asks questions and holds my ground a little bit. Right. And, um, so that led to, you know, uh, that them getting more aggressive. And, um, so I had to learn, I had to learn fast and I'm not a lawyer, didn't go to law school. I probably had the smarts to do it, but just wasn't, wasn't interested in it. And, um, so I started reading acts, you know, trying to figure out what the, what all that gibberish meant because the sentences were really not English. And um, I mean, it was English words, but it was just written in a, in a strange way. So I had to learn, how, you know, what the acts were saying. I had to use a dictionary a lot to try and figure out what's going on with these, you know, started, um, you know, down the sort of, uh, freedom guru track. I thought went from one guy teaching something to another and picked up stuff and, you know, started to, I started my awakening process to what's going on and, um, you know, had varying degrees of success, mostly not, you know, just more arrests and, um, you know, just more oppression. Um, eventually over a long period of time, I discovered commerce. Um, I've done a few common law things with limited success, like they at least, you know, kind of slowed them down a little bit. 
when I did my first commercial move, the judge ran out of the room and that was the beginning of um, the tide turning. So it wasn't as uh, like the way tide turns, it's not a, you know, instantly it goes out. It's, 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 uh, it comes in and then it starts to go the other way. It's, you know, same thing with the seasons. It's not a, you know, it's, it slowly gets to the longest day and then slowly back to the shortest. So at that point, that's when the tide changed. It actually started going in my direction from then on. And um, over the next year or two, you know, a lot of, lot of things happened, but I was, um, I'm, I'm left, to this day, I'm left alone by them, you know, quote unquote them. So that led to um, a lot of things happened. Uh, you know, stuff was in the news and um, people were stepping down because of some of the things I did. So, so people started to seek me out and that's when I met Josh. And then we became friends um, over the next few years. And then he did that movie about the smart meters. And I didn't know anything about smart meters. But he did the movie and I helped him get an editor and, you know, uh, not that I had anything to do with the movie. I just connected two people, but that movie did really well. And he called me up, uh, it's probably been out for a couple of years and he, he realized he was um, exposing the problem, but there was no solution for it. It's just like, oh, everything's bad. And then you leave people hanging. Right. And, and so he felt like, He's got, you know, we, I, I, he felt responsible to try and do something. And so he called me up knowing what had happened in my life before and said, do you, you know, is there something you can do about it? And I looked at what was going on, you know, from a bird's eye view. And I went, yeah, this is commercial and I, you, we can do a document. So I wrote a document, took, um, it took a couple of months. They're not easy. And um, I sent it to him. And he wanted me to come to Seattle to speak to a group of about 20, 20 to 30 people about the process. And I said, well, I'm not a public speaker. I don't, you know, it's not my, not my gig, you know, it's not my thing. And um, he convinced me to come down and I kind of showed what was going on and the room lit up. Like every, every head was, you know, every eye was kind of opening up. Like I went, well, what's going on here? So one thing led to another. We had a group in Seattle doing it. Within a couple of weeks of that, uh, a lady in Detroit got a hold of the document and said, this is it. Can you guys come to Detroit? Again, I'm not a public speaker. Now I'm speaking in, in a theater of a couple hundred people and half of them turned on, right? So it, it, one thing just kind of led to another. It wasn't, um, it wasn't a plan or a, I was just trying to one foot in front of the other, trying to get through a very tough time. And it's led me now to, I'm speaking to you. This is the front end of it. <laughs> oh man. Well, you know, you have done so much. Yeah. To get here. And I invite people to check out um, the documentary and there's an in power movement channel. And I'll just read for people what's on the website, because I think it's really powerful. It says in power is a worldwide movement securing life, liberty, and property for all through accountability. The InPower community is culturally, governmentally, and geographically diverse, but has a common bond. The need to have authority over one's, own, one's health and, and home. Regardless of where you live in the world today, people have fewer choices when it comes to certain technology and services, and often have no choices when it comes to medical interventions with no recourse for bodily harm. So, you know, you flash forward from, you know, you got Josh who was looking into the smart meters where people were getting sick and they actually just um, brought one to my house. And had I never, or, or I got the notice saying, hey, you can get the smart meter now. And had I never seen his documentary, I would have been like, okay, cool. I'll get the smart meter. I don't know about the radiation and all the people getting sick. And it's crazy because when you go down one of these rabbit holes, whether it's smart meters or 5G or whatever, and you start looking at it, you're like, or vaccines or whatever, you're like, there's no way it can actually be like this. Like, how would, does this get legislated? And then we also don't have a choice. Same with big technology and, and um, the invasion of privacy and all these different things that go behind the scenes. So there's never been a better time for action and for a solution. And so can you explain in your own words what the Empower Movement is and how people can get involved? Well, it's, it's a thing that kind of came up. Um, 
organically, more or less, based on what I did with Josh in Seattle. And then it led to these other, um, these other agendas. And they're all one thing, once you, once you can kind of see it from a uh, high enough perspective. It's just, they're all in concert together. They overlap and um, one works the other and all that stuff. So the 5G activates what they're va gonna vaccinate you with and, and vice versa, what they're spraying in the air with. It all is one thing, uh, just looks like war. The main thing that they are doing, and, I, and I, I say this a lot, is this: they are deploying weapons using commercial process and using commercial entities to do it. This is not armies putting up 5G. This is Verizon putting up 5G. This is not, um, you know, a government forcing a vaccine. It's a, it's a corporation that, that is behind it. So, and, and what they were counting on, like going to what you just said, um, they are getting our agreement. And and it's a, it's a funny way of agreeing that most people have a hard time wrapping their head around it, but it, whether you understand it or not, um, it's, it's a fact that you can get what's called tacit agreement. If you don't say um, no in the correct way, you've said yes. And so that's what they were relying on is that our ignorance of that so that they could get our agreement to deploy these weapons. That's how they're, when you got the notice about your smart meter, that was an offer. And they wait for you. You didn't say no, you said yes. And it's a hard yes. Like it's a contractual yes. That's how they get, that's how they make it look like it's um, mandatory because it, it kind of is, you're, in a, you're, you're bound by contract. So they, they can kind of push on you because, and you think it's just this oppression and they're passing laws or whatever it is, but it's not like that. It's more like, no, you've agreed to this. I, I, you, you have to hold your end of the bargain. I get to vaccinate you or I get to stick this thing on your house or whatever it is, you see. So they were counting on nobody catching on to this hidden sort of um, commercial jurisdiction. And I was put through a, a very difficult um, set of circumstances and a long period of time where I was trained and I didn't know I was being trained until like now I see it I can because I can look back and go oh yeah I was brought through this for this very reason at this very time but at the time it was just more like oh my god when's this going to end right is there any end in sight you know and, and I went through all the fear and anxiety and all I went through all the stuff that everybody's gone through so I, I everybody thinks that I look like I'm joyful and and calm and everything and, and don't really care about this. It's not like that. It, I've been there and I'm past that. So I'm not scared by any of this stuff. Like it, it's, I know we're going to win. Like I know it in, um, in the way that if you were to sell your car, you, you would know that you're going to get that money for it. It's like that. So, because that's exactly what they've done. And we just flipped, we ping pong it back. So now the, um, they're in the dishonor position and, and, and they know it. So. Well, I love how you're confident because I, I know a lot of people have, you were saying at the beginning, um, a lot of people are kind of waking up to some of the stuff that you're putting out there. You know, a lot of people are becoming aware because something feels off. And so your certainty is reassuring. And so just to add some clarity on a couple of things, when you say they, like, do you, who do you mean by they? Because you can go down, I go down a lot of rabbit holes, right? It goes into government okay. and then I'm like, well, why do we have war? And then it goes into corporations and David uh, E. Martin, who was the head uh, or the, the main researcher in Plandemic 2 talks about the corporatocracy, how it is corporations doing this and whatever software server or thing he uses, um, he found out that the Prince of Liechtenstein was going to patent Basmati rice, right? And so obviously that would screw over all the, all the people of Liechtenstein by doing something illegal in kind of like a corporate fashion. But I remember when I went to um, law and security in our police foundations and we did a law course and I was like, this is written so weird. You know what I mean? Like I don't, none of this is, is written in a, in a, 
like a regular straightforward way. Why is it so deliberately confusing? This is nuts. And that way the average person can't go in or even understand what's happening. Like, so maybe you can kind of break down a little bit of that process, what you mean by they, and um, yeah, I'll just stop there because there's so many questions I have for you. Yeah, they, they is a very um, is a very deep topic because it's it's multi layered and um, but it is still one thing. Like the universe is set up, um, it's less um, duality than we uh, than what we can perceive. So it, things um, there's certain sayings like as above, so below. Um, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on in earth as it is in heaven. These are um, principles of reality. And what we see here is based on a time space um, construct. And time and space are, are tied together. So there is, a, in, order for, in order for this to be that, that means that everything around it is not that. And, and that's not true. So when, when I say they, um, depending on the context of the thing, and I always ask, that's a really good question to ask too, because everybody says they, and, it, and we all have an inherent um, knowing of that there is a they out there. But you, you've got to actually um, think about it, critically think, okay, why do I say they? Why, when somebody says they, I understand what they're, what they're talking about, but we don't ever get into specifics of who that is. It's um it's from the biblical perspective when i say they it is those that want to overthrow the most high god and that trickles down um it's all connected to the corporate entities the government entities and and you know, so-called luciferians um that are are part of that agenda. So that's when I, that's how I see they, okay? So just, just to answer that question, I know that kind of opened up a whole rabbit holes in itself, but that there is a big they out there. It's big. And we are more important about this claim that they have than we understand. And that's on purpose. We're not supposed to, um, we're not supposed to know, we're supposed to figure it out. That's part of the um, agreement to, to adjudicate this thing. So we're, we're partly the pawns, we're also partly the judge. So it's, it's kind of, it's, it's a strange situation. But anyway, that all said, that's what, to, when I say they, that's what I mean. And it's all interconnected. It's like a pyramidical um, structure with the all seeing eye at the top, but it's all they. Got and it. What, and the other question? Well, I'll, yeah. I was going to just chime in real quick on that because, you know, going down some of the rabbit holes that I have, uh, one of them in particular was studying human trafficking and um, being a part of the International Tribunal of Natural Justice and learning about the numbers and like the people behind it and just your brain can't even imagine why someone would do that and then how those numbers are possible. Like 80,000 kids a day, or not a day, gee, prescribed, um, but a lot a day, 80,000 a year go missing in the States alone, just in the US. And so if there are groups of people organizing this and it's successful at, at such mass numbers, how the heck is this happening? And how are these agencies that should be able to find and uh, prevent this thing from uh, happening, how come they're not stopping it? And when you go all the way down, you see this occultism, you see this Satanism, you see this uh, human sacrifice. You know, I've seen stuff that'll give you nightmares. And um, it seems that when people really track something down, it goes to that, goes to that rabbit hole. Like that actually exists. And it's, you know, Alex Zakaris was on the show and he talked about uh, he wrote a book why evil matters, how science and religion flubbed a big one. And his kind of premise was is you know there's no way to address this type of evil, you know? And if we, if we don't pull our head out of the sand, um, how are we going to address these issues and, and change it? Oh boy. Um, <laughs> it's, it's, it seems like, it seems daunting, but it's a choice. Because that, that duality and that um, 
Each one of us is a part of that. As, hor as horrific as that sounds. And we just need to choose not to do that anymore and choose not to. It comes down to the claim of who is God, who is the most high God, however you understand that to be. Because there's a, there's a being that, according to the biblical um, um, text, there is a being that was created very soon after there was such a thing as creation. So uh, very close to being um, the, the one, the, the only thing that exists challenged that's a it's a claim and it's been go, it's been going on for eons in 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 the you know how we understand time that is co that's coming to a a head right here right now and guess who decides and that's why you're seeing this divide everybody's if i say divide everybody knows like yeah it's like there's a, like a, there's a separation happening yeah because it's going to one of two ways at this point, and there can only be one way. So um, I don't know what happens there, but you, you got to get on the right track. So understand that we all have um, good and evil inside of us. And anybody that pr pretends that they don't, they're, they're lying to themselves. It's still at this point. That little bit even though even 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 if you're very advanced and you know there's lots of people who are very advanced but they it's still a grain of it there like it's still pride or whatever it is like we all have it that is connected to that whole thing that you just described believe it or not and and it's us as individuals and us as a collective one being going no more we're going this way and there's nothing anybody can do about it. Wow. Okay. You, you're opening up a whole bag of worms because, <laughs> you know, like, um, okay. So with the Bible, I'd like to talk about that because I remember in your talk, you talked a little bit about the Bible and you say, Hey, if you haven't read this, like this is a very important document. So I think that your frame around the Bible would be interesting to hear because I've, I've heard a lot of different takes on it. And what cued that up for me was you were saying that, uh, you know, this group of people is trying to like overthrow this, you know, most high God or this, this, uh, I don't know, like jurisdiction, you also call it that way maybe. And um, I've heard references of references of this in all these different spots, you know, but, but trying to piece it all together. And what exactly does it mean? Cause actually even studying with, David Lombert Senapas, he talked about some of these things that you're talking about and how it was relevant in the native culture. And I'm just like, it was so confusing to me. Like, it's like, I kind of understand it, but, but really to dive in, I don't know. And so one of the ideas I've also heard was that they need, we need, they, we need to agree to this, right? Like you're talking about consent, whether it's tacit agreement, you don't even know that you're agreeing, which is total nonsense, but that's being an ignorance. You just don't know. Right. So you're agreeing. And so it's like, okay, why would we agree to this? It doesn't make any sense. And so I'd love for you to kind of speak on that. And then also the, the, your reference of how you view the, the Bible. And cause it also in the Bible, it's the last thing I want to say was it talks about the harvest, right? The divide, right. Or the, and so maybe that is what's happening. I've thought about that recently. It's like, holy crap. Like a lot of biblical stuff is going on right now. Like this is yeah. intense. So. I know. And you can't deny it. It's like you get up, you know, like get in the game, get in the get in the real show here. Because um, so the Bible, um, one of the things I do at my talks is because um, when you get to the Bible, everybody's head, everybody you can see that everybody just shuts off. Ninety percent of the people because they've got an, an opinion about the Bible, and so I usually do a show of hands who does not have an opinion about the Bible. And of all the couple thousand people that I've spoken to in front of, two people put up their hand and said, I don't have an opinion. I actually have no opinion one way or the other about the Bible. Which, which in and of itself is something you need to ponder. Why does everybody have an opinion about something? Other than the US president, very few people have a, a topic where everybody has an opinion. 
Why is that? It's, a, an, it's an old, dusty old book as far as everybody's uh, concerned. But why do you have an opinion about it? And then, so that, that's the first awakening. Why, is, why does everybody have an opinion about it? And then I say, who, how many have read it? And it's usually about 15, 10 to 15% of a, of a crowd, always. It's the same numbers, all, always. And so I say to everybody, no matter what your opinion is, good, bad, otherwise, your opinion is not your own. It cannot be because you have not read it. You got your opinion from somebody else. Somebody else told you something about it because you have not experienced it. You cannot have an opinion about a restaurant that you have not gone to. You can only regurgitate somebody else's opinion out of it. And whether you respect their opinion or not, you may buy into it, but it's not your opinion. It cannot be. And that's enough to, okay, so I'll leave you with that. So that now I will talk about the Bible and what I think it is. Actually, what I know it is, it's many things, but it's a contract. And you can see it if you just watch the Queen's Oath. I swear to defend this thing. That's a contract. And it's not because she wants to. She has to. And I, I, that's a whole other rabbit hole too. So it's a contract and it behooves you. If she's ruling over you, and, and I think she's actually ruling over the whole world in a, in a certain sense. It behooves you to understand what the contract is between you and her. And if you haven't read it, you don't know. That's all I'm saying. Like, wake up, read it. You can still have whatever opinion about it, but go and read it and see what, what she has to do and what they have to do, what the president has to do, because he stuck his hand on it. Well, that, so is, that's, that is, that's one of the most fascinating ways to view the Bible I've ever heard. You know, before this, I, I interviewed uh, Jeffrey Darty, and he was a former evangelist and he's got 10,000 Bible hours, uh, like studying the Bible and he's translating it from Greek. So I have a few questions. And one of the fascinating things, I got him to wrap it up. I was like, all right, Jeff, so what the heck's going on in the world, right? Well, one of the things he told me in private, he goes, they, they purposefully make the order of the books all jumbled up. They don't, he's like, it should be this way. And he kind of told me the chapters, how it would read as a more um, just coherent piece. Um, but he said, he goes, um, well, what's going to happen is they're going to have a, a second coming of Jesus and it's going to be a hologram essentially. And I was like, project blue game. I was like, what are you talking about, bro? He's like, I'm, I'm translating it from Greek. He's like, that's in the Bible. I was like, are you kidding me? Like, that's messed up. Cause I haven't, I haven't read it like, you know, since I've been a kid and even then maybe it was 70% as a kid and who knows what I even absorbed. Um, I tried a few times and never got all the way through. So my question would be, um, what version of it would I read? And one of the things I remember hearing is that um, it's like you're, uh, it's only open for the, the eyes to see or something. Like you see the Bible when your eyes are open, like one of those passages. I don't know. It's like how you, how you read it. Is there something like that? Like would you understand like the references you're talking about now by just reading it through and reading it as a contract or, or from some certain perspective? Because it is kind of written in a very odd way. Well, it, well, it is. Um, you can a lot will happen if you just read it. As, uh, it gets deeper if you get into the original text because not if you get into the actual Hebrew, the letters themselves have meaning within the word, and the word has meaning within the sentence. And, the, and like it, it, it's it's um, it's amazing. Uh, like who I don't know who wrote it. The letters themselves are also part of the five spiral. It's the letters. You, yeah, it, like all that. Um, there's a lot going on with what the original language, like a lot, it's deep. And um, like the sacred geometry and all that stuff is all in there. So they don't want, they, they don't want you looking at that and they don't want you uh, talking about it. And it's like, that's why, the, that's why the Bible is vilified. That's why most people have a, like a, an aversion to it because somebody put that in their head. Like, don't, ugh, don't look at that. It's just like COVID. There's COVID. Wear a mask. It's the same thing by the same beings. Don't look at that. That's just, that's ridiculous. Or it's nasty or it's caused all kinds of problems in the world over, like those are all the things and everybody just goes, oh, I'm not reading that. 
because there's something that can happen in there. So it, it happens on many levels, but you can just research it. Like, especially online now, you can research topics. So if you want to find out what the queen has to do about, uh, you know, a certain thing, you can go find all the Bible verses in it. I wrote her a document and I just did a, um, I started with Bible verses. So it was based on that. And then I wrote the document around those. So I just looked up Bible verses on, you know, children, widows. Like, what are you, what are you obligated to do? Queen. And I just found them all and I listed them all and I changed them all to, so here's another thing, the 1611 King James for as far as English, that's the one you, you want. That's the, that's the one she technically swears on. And they changed the English language, the alphabet, I should say, not language, well, language somewhat, but the alphabet in particular to get away from that one. And so the regular so-called authorized King James version has the exact same words in it, but they're spelled different. And so that she technically doesn't have to uphold that one. Yeah, it, it gets it gets out there, dude. Like there's yeah, no. The, I didn't expect. You know, I knew we were gonna get a bit out there. Keep keep going. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah, for instance, these and U's got changed in our alphabet, and that's why on old buildings you'll sometimes or old documents you'll see V where a U should be, or like because. If you look at the letter W, it, it's actually two what we would call V's now, but that was U. Why would they do that? I know that when they they change, you don't know. You tell me why this is better than that. Like why why did you switch them? But I can tell you what happened when you did. Changed every verse in the Bible. Mm. Without changing one verse in the Bible, the words are all the same, spellings are all different. Every verse is affected. Well, then, the, and that that in like think about this: the, the change they did to the to the English language and the and the alphabet changed every verse in a very large volume of what are the chances of that? It's and astronomical, it makes, and it makes perfect sense if you think of it through contract or law, right? Because you could be swearing on something that the words don't mean the same thing, and that's what I remember learning in criminology is like, wait, that word means that. But he's like, no, when you go to a court, it doesn't mean the same thing. You're not communicating the same language. And then this makes me think about um, the Tower of Babel and how you know we're basically babbling with each other. We don't understand uh, what's going on. And then you could kind of bring that to the present moment of right now of saying, you know, the government wants to force vaccinate you or something or, you know, wear a mask or, you know, you want your freedom, but you don't know how to empower yourself to just be a free and sovereign person. I liked your analogy of the, the goose, you know, when the, when the goose flies across the border, it doesn't even know the border's there. Um, but, but if you kill the goose and you try to take him across the border, you'd have people in armed guards stopping you. And so what's going on there? And so, uh, yeah, do you want to talk about the you know, continue on that thread you were going because there's so much we could uncover. Yeah, well, uh, again, when I, when I discovered all this, because somebody told me, you know, you got to use the 1611 King James Bible. I'm like, whatever, because I'm, I'm actually kind of a skeptical guy, like, believe it or not. Everybody thinks I'm this thing, but actually I'm like, nah, I don't think so. And then I, I happened to pick one up. I just happened to be in a, a bookstore and I saw one there. I thought, oh, I'll just buy that. And then I started to read it and it was like really strange and, and, and something was going on, like something was happening just by reading it, these weird spellings. I, I don't, I can't explain it to you, but there, it's different and uh, like something actually happens in your brain and you get actually good at it. At first it's, you know, F's or S's and you know, like, what is all this and U's or D's, but after a while you start to be able to read it fluently. Like it, it's not that long. And you can actually read just as if it's normal, normal English. Really strange. So that's one thing, one aspect of it that I noticed. So then, and then we, because I had the book, I thought, well, okay, I'll just try it in the next document. Cause we were using Bible verses in our documents and we were taking them from the regular King James. And they seem to be like, oh, everybody's just ignoring it. Like, oh, uh, whatever, you know, Bible verses. We switched to the 1611, noticeable difference. Like it was noticeable. Like Are you they talking went, about in courts when you would go to courts or? And what were you, document, what were you, 
what documents was it about specifically? Was it for the smart meters or was it for something else? No, no, this is long before that. This is while I'm still in the, in the, in the child support. And then that ended up because I started to um, learn about the government and everything was going on. I, I stopped, I rescinded my driver's license and, you know, I did, I did a bunch of stuff because I was starting to go, Hey, what's going on? You know, the birth certificate, all, you know, I learned about all, all that stuff because of what happened. So then I'm like, just, no, this is all wrong. And, <laughs> and started, you know, driving without a license, driving without insurance and, and that kind of thing. So I had all that going on at the same time. So I, I'd sometimes be in court um, twice in a week on different matters in different courthouses. I, it was just, it was not a fun life. It was very stressful. How many years was that? And then that? they started, huh? How many years How many did years? you have to go through that? Yeah. I would guess about five, six, seven years, something like that. It, like it, it, and there was no end in sight. And so like for people who are you're trying to like grab hold and figure out what's going on here. So are you suggesting that as you say, don't try this, you know, yourself unless you know what you're doing. But yeah. So there's that. Cause I've heard about this too, like natural law and, you know, sovereign being, cause you said you tried all that. Like I'm a sovereign. It's like, yeah, get out of here. Cause if, then you explain the jurisdictions and this is from past videos I've watched yours. So there's a lot of content that you put out there. Um, but what I want to say is that, is it possible I've heard this before to not to drive without a license and not go to jail to uh, not, can it go as far as not pay your taxes and not pay insurance and you could just go around and do whatever. But does that apply to crossing the border? If so, so where does this, where does this freedom end in this jurisdiction or uh, legal realm? Um, that's a deep question. And I don't want to lead anybody astray because my experience has gone past all that. So, and it's not, it's, it's hard to describe without sounding um, nutty or, or way out there. What I can tell you is I've, I've done like, I've done all that stuff. And so I understand it. A bit, and not even understand it's not theoretical to me it's not something i read on the internet it's something that i i went into court and i said it and i got the i got the shot in the head like i i did the time in jail i got the pepper sprayed like i'm that guy like it's not a theory to me when you're when you're in jail and you don't and you don't see um that, that there's a possibility that you may not get out. Like that's a definite possibility of what the way the system's set up. When, you, when you've when you been through that, then you've been through it. It's not, a, it, otherwise it's kind of theoretical and you, and you, you know, you read st some stuff on the internet and it sounds like this and, you know, some guy that I don't know did this and, and something happened. I, I'm not, everything that I did, I either had, had it happen to me or somebody very close to me. Um, that's the only things that I, that I trust. And I've seen a lot of other things on the internet. So I've heard a lot of stuff, but I've never used that as, um, as a truth to me because it's, it's not strong enough for me. I'm too skeptical. Yeah. I hope that's true. And maybe that did happen, but I have no idea and there's no way it can be proved to me one way or the other, but I did see a lot around me and a lot happened to me. So, these are all things that I tried and, and then when they started running from me instead of me running from them, then I went, okay, this has some, there's something to this and just kept doing more of it, studying more of it, going deeper with it, trying it. And eventually they just, they're out of my life. So that has gone to the point where, and there's no way for me to prove this one way or the other because I've, I've only had circumstantial um like it, for me to, to believe it's happening i have to see it three times at least so i've seen twice where i've had two pretty strong experiences where um i'm, I'm face to face with uh, authority like as you describe and i walk through like they almost can't see me they just kind of know you're coming and just like, no, yeah. it's not like that. It's more like I'm there and they're talking to me, but the mechanism just falls apart. Like, okay, move on, move, go. It's like in the, in the, in the Star Wars thing, 
the very yes. first movie. Yep. These are not the droids you're looking for. It's like that. And I'm not doing anything like that. That's that, like it's like that. simulation hologram stuff. I've heard of it. That's wild, man. <laughs> so that's why I'm saying it's hard for me to say this because then people get the wrong idea. And, well, we're, and, and, we're, we're pretty yeah. out there on this show, so you can feel free. And it's funny because, like, yeah. you know, like I've – I've experienced glimpses of this in my real life and every in my, my own personal life, really strange things that I can't even put into words. And so I have these like clues and fractals. And the more I continue to be alive, the more I'm like, I must be in a bloody video game. Like there's no other way to explain any of this crap and all these glitches. Like I must be in a video game first player because these, these anomalies are so peculiar they don't make any sense and you just hear of like you know and it's all around belief and possibility and agreement and experience but then it, it it's frustrating because there's so much nonsense out there too right you've seen this and you've tried it and you've been through that um, experience and that's kind of what I've done with my life is I've gone and sought this out to experience the limits of human potential all these different experiences and that's how I have different knowing and understanding than sometimes other people just because of what I went through that I can't explain or give to you. And I wish that I could, but I'm unable to, but what I can tell you, like, you know, this is a very uh, different experience, but I was on, um, I was interviewed the other day by Josh Trent from wellness force. And uh, I was talking about my near death experience from Everest. And I said, you know, the weird thing for me is when, when I knew I was in trouble is I heard my voice, outside of me not like an inner dialogue but like it was outside of me speaking to me telling me it was okay it's and it was it was done in such a weird way that i can't explain it it wasn't my inner dialogue it was like me talking to myself in a whole another way and it just like shattered even what reality was and how that where what the hell was that voice you know what was that and so i just wanted to kind of seed that for people because you know on the podcast i'll ask people to kind of share one of those experiences and um david robinson he's like i've never shared this experience ever but talks about going under a ufo with another guy who basically was looking out the window at the same thing just saying holy f just swearing and swearing and that guy hasn't talked about it since and david's like i've only told a few people because i think i'm 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 nuts and so what are the limits to this construct and the final thing that i'll say i think is so important is the idea of authority what gives any other human wearing a badge or these imaginary lines authority just if you think about from a biblical sense or a spiritual sense or a common sense why why is this human telling me what i cannot can and can't do right? You know what I mean? If I'm not going around harming someone, that's, a, that's about it. Don't harm, don't take, don't do those things, but allow people to move about peacefully. Um, and so what, it, what the hell is going on here? What are, what are all these agreements? Like even working with the Native American elders, like when Canada and the USA border happened, that wasn't always here. They were here before that. Then all of a sudden, there's like a person there waiting to say, what do you mean? Like, get out of the way. And that's the construct you're talking about, right? And they yeah. impose that on so they posted on the natives they watched it happen now they're imposing it on all of us worldwide and 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 where does it stop so i'll I'll be quiet there and let you chime in yeah so it's it and it is a construct and it's based on our belief if we believe it's there then it's there and that's why it's there's and there's no piece of paper that gets you out of this stuff and that's another misnomer. Uh, like the piece of paper is representation of your inner belief, and you got to be able to stand on that. You have to understand it as much as you can, and 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 that it becomes your reality. So, like when you get to a certain point, others' reality cannot infringe upon mine. Mine gets strong. It's like I create this bubble and I can, I can make it bigger and bigger and bigger and it's getting bigger and bigger because I'm having more awareness of who I am and what I, and what I am to a degree and, um, and what authority I have. Because we're not told anything when we get here. And that's on purpose. There's a reason for it. Because it goes back to, the, I'm going right back to the beginning of this thing. It goes back to an original claim who is the most high God. And the claim, a claim, it, it doesn't have to be true. It's a, a claim stands until a superior claim 
supersedes it. So everything that they do, they base on, on claims. They claim there's a border at, at, between the United States and, and Canada. They claim there's a queen in, in um, that's a claim. Queen in London, the, the United States president, all claims. And we're all going, yep, agree with that claim. Yep, yep, looks good, yep. But the, the, that's not how the, that's not how it was created in the first place. It was not, if you re, you know, like I, I always say on the in Genesis, there's the seven days, and on the, and it doesn't say on the eighth day God created countries, and on the ninth day God created money. These are constructs. These are ideas that somebody put here, and we've all believed in them, and they reinforced them like crazy. But it's it's one of the roots of the problem. Because money creates the idea that there's lack. There's lack of money. If you don't, like, you know, you know what I'm saying? As soon as there's money, now there is no money. There's non-money as well, where before that, there, there was, money didn't even exist. It wasn't even a thought. So yeah, how could I not have it? How could I not have enough money? Like, I would never wake up in the morning, man, I wish I had more money. Because then I could do this. I could buy food. I could live indoors. Well, you know, I, w I want you to keep going. I just wanted to bring up one small point here. Um, I remember one of the, the teachings from David Lone Bear. He goes, uh, he got us to define the words and, and we'd write out a sentence we all thought we knew the meaning of, right? Like just a simple sentence. And then he would say, okay, what does this mean? What does this mean? What does this mean? So if you think about claim, right? You think you know what that means, but you actually have no idea what that word means. Well, most of, most of us, I'll just say generally, so, or even more specifically me. So I just, I just Googled it, right? And it says for 1A, to ask for, especially as a right, to ask for, to call for, you know, that's what it's to, it's a request, you know, and and so you're, you, and when you go into law and you go into jurisdictions and when you go into enforcement and authority, it's, it's a house of cards, but it's a tricky one because you're engaging in words in, in these agreements you're not even aware of. The easiest way I can understand that is jujitsu. If you don't know what I'm doing, you're screwed. You know what I mean? You're totally screwed. Yeah, exactly. If you know what I'm doing, you're cool. You, you know, you'll be able to, you'll, you'll be fine. Yeah, and that's what the, the whole commercial system is based on. This it's based on principles, and if you don't even know that it exists, you're done. You're done. You're done. You're a mark. If you know it exists and can get fluent at it, and it's not that difficult, then you're equal with everybody else. Nobody can take advantage of you. It's it's like it's like that. So they've hidden all this stuff. So uh, what were you just talking about? I wanted. I had a point on that. Uh, was it claims and, and asking? Yes, claim. So claim. And, and like I said, I, I, when I got into this, I had to put down my, um, I don't, wouldn't call it pride, but you know, like, oh, I know what that means, uh, words. I had to put on all my assumptions of, of words. Like if I really didn't understand it, like, do I really know what that is? Or I sort of vaguely, you know, I, I kind of get it. I took the time and looked them up and it, and it's tedious, but it, it, I disciplined myself to look up words because you have to understand all the meanings of the word, because if you stick all the, and you go through all the meanings in that sentence, all of a sudden, oh, this sentence is like, it's morphing right in front of me. And that's just with one word. Now you do that with this word. So if I use that version of this word and this version, oh, well, that means this now. It's, it's like the English language is very manipulative and I, I did a thing and I don't know if it's true or not, but it, it, it's, it was a um, um, design to, for this and we're actually speaking backwards and there's a bunch of stuff that goes on all, along with that. So that, that known, I, I started to figure out they're using what I call word magic, like they're, they're, they're fiddling with words and getting double meanings and all that stuff. So in, in one of these times, I was, I think I was um, demanding $300 million or no, I was demanding oaths at that time because I, I tried to do a Freedom of Information Act and they kept saying blah, blah, blah in their gobbledygook language. So I, I just did a straight up demand without, uh, well, their forms. So I looked up the word demand in Black's Law Dictionary. It said, this demand is the second strongest word in law next to claim. 
And I went, what? A claim is the strongest word in law? Change my whole perspective. Now I see what's going on. Everything is just a claim. And because nobody's coming with a higher claim, it stands. Lucifer is claiming to be God right here, right now. And there are a bunch of Luciferians. Everybody talks about Luciferians. Okay, what, what does that mean? What, what, they, they, are they worshiping some guy in a red suit with little horns on? Like, what, what is that exactly? What is their belief? What is, what, what is it about them? Not their behaviors. Like, what is their core agenda here? And you've got to see it for what it is. And then everything starts to click into place. Ah, oh, that's why they're... And then you see this. Ah, I see what it is. I see what you're doing. And I see how you're doing it. That's where I'm at. And that's what I'm trying to t get across to people without giving them the full download because it's too much. But if you just, you know, start down, like you can be, you can, you can get engaged without having the full knowledge. And that's the beauty of it because, and it's because we're using their, what they've done against them. So they have tricked us all into birth certificates, which turned us all into merchants unknowingly. Therefore, merchant law applies to you and ignorance of the law is of no excuse. So you're a merchant, you got a merchant number, everybody knows their merchant number. And, and, if, you, and if somebody goes, I don't have a merchant number. Yeah, you do, just think about it. Go open a bank account tomorrow and see what number you need. Go get a driver's license tomorrow, see what number you need. Go apply for anything, see what number you need and you'll get it. Go and pay your taxes. See what number you need. I'll, that's all I'll say. You'll see what it is. It's your merchant number. You're a merchant. Merchant law applies. Ignorance of the law is no excuse. Therefore, you're in the game. Good luck with it. And um, so th that's all it is. I just happen to go through a horrendous thing that nobody else has to go through because I can shortcut you, like, don't do that. And not that I'm saying don't do that, but it's more like, I went through all that, seen it all, like, not everything. I'm not, I'm not like, I've been through a lot, like a lot, more than most. And this is what worked, and this is why. And it works every time. Like, this is like, bing, bing, bing. They back off, by and large. There's the odd one that's just, you know, so hell bent, but um, it, you're in the actual game that they're playing uh, on us and you're playing according to their rules and they have to, they have to drink the cup. They have to eat their own stuff. Wow. Well, there's so much I want to kind of unpack from that. So the Luciferian thing, for me, like that's becoming more common, like out of shadows documentary. Um, if you look at Hollywood and all these different weird rituals, that one, I remember going into that, that process of just kind of figuring out what was going on in the world and getting into that, like Satanism and, and this, and I was like, well, what does that mean? Like what is going on? And, you know, for me, I think the bottom line is like, it's a different set of beliefs. And if you're just a regular person, you can't believe what they believe and you cannot understand or believe what they do. It is completely opposite to like a normal, rational, good human. Um, but there are people who believe these things and do these things and it exists. And if you look at Hollywood and all the symbolism and all this, like it's, it's really obvious. It's not hard to understand. And my knowing comes from studying propaganda and consciousness and words and spells and what you say. It's a, it's a hundred percent binding. You know what I mean? It's very tricky stuff. And so when this is all happening and, and you're observing the world and you kind of see it and, you, and you're like, oh, wait, does this exist? And you start to look around and you're like, holy crap, that, you know, spell is everywhere. You know, that symbolism is everywhere. You can find and you go on Google right now and find uh, a whole bunch of actors like uh, Roseanne Barr and so many other people saying, I sold my soul to the devil. Like in that quote specifically, tons of them. You know what I mean? And then you have all this stuff coming out and it gets really, really, really dark. And, you know, and I don't know if that's necessary for everybody to go in, but like no. for, for me, it's been super challenging to know that that exists. And so there's a few things I want to sh share then I'll, I'll kind of switch it up because this is one of my own fundamental questions. So as far as the Bible goes, 
is it not a religious thing? Like could it, could the Quran or other or or Judaism or anything else is it, it the same idea? I think that with with the resistance for me and religions was the wars back in the day. So is it specifically the Bible because that's that's the original claim, or is it you know what's the deal with religion as a whole? And then my ultimate question is, uh, uh, sorry to throw a lot at you, but it's, uh, you know, if this evil stuff isn't going on in the world, what can I do to participate in creating freedom and um, kindness and compassion and growth and harmony in my own life and for my own community, but also for those who are disenfranchised and receiving this harm uh, through mostly darkness and ignorance. And that's how I also see Satanism or uh, Luciferianism as well, right? It's this manipulation. It's this darkness and it's this fear. So you don't kind of pop your head up, right? Because you're very confused. You're disoriented. But what, what breaks that spell? It's light, information, and truth. And if you have those things, you can navigate that darkness. And that's kind of how I'm seeing it right now. So I'd love your feedback on it. Yeah, well, and that's what we're, that's what we're, tr we're trying to create that vehicle worldwide where if, if you come in and just kind of follow certain principles and they're not religious, they follow, like you said, many religions, like treat each other kindly. Like don't, you know, don't be a, you know, like <laughs> just common sense treat each other with respect and and you know don't steal don't like it just, uh, if you just follow those what's happening uh, around and those that have been uh, volunteering there's their life everybody's lives is, uh, are changing my life is changing we're grow we're growing into something and we're becoming the new thing and uh, and the thing about it is no matter what they're doing we're over here, like, like I said, I have this bubble, you know, my, my reality and, and, and people like things can't infringe upon it anymore because I've just been through so much and I, I can hold my spot now. Right. So, but as a group, when there's more people doing that, what are they going to do? Even killing us, it doesn't changes nothing. Cause like you said, this is a video game. It's, you can get to that point where it's like, I'm done with that. Like, not on, not in, not, uh, you know, not on my watch, not on my doorstep. Get out of here. Like, you gotta go. And, you know, the book of Enoch talks about that. And we're at that stage. It just has to be done in a, in the, in the proper way. It has to be a checkmate of colossal proportions that not one man could could even conceive of um how like there's so much going on that i could get into all in concert and it's like who who's the mastermind behind this there is no one there's no man like it's we're all just doing our part and but there's a, an amazing checkmate you can see it it's just like you're done your claim is over this is now the highest claim no chance of appeal no complaints no technicalities nothing over gone and they know it they can feel it that's why they're frantic right now that's why everything is just so stupid the stupidity is 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 like put your mask on in between bites like it's just like are you people listening to that are you actually considering that as being rational and uh, making some kind of sense and you and you want to follow that but that's how far out it is right now it's craziness yeah. Well, and I like your view on it because it gives me a little bit of hope. I've gone through a, a serious process during this coronavirus stuff because, you know, when it's when I realized it was real, we came back and it real as in like they were going to go for this, you know, like this was happening. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, you know, it was the first day or last day of freedom. Thank, thankfully, I went to the spa. It was the end of the year and uh, I was going to go snowboarding and the park wasn't up or something. So I was like, all right, I'm just going to go to this awesome spa they have instead. I had a great day. Next day, it was like, okay, we're going to go in this two week lockdown. I was like, this is not going to be two weeks. 
I knew that immediately, right? And I was like, this is not going to be two weeks. And so I went down the rabbit hole trying to figure out what's going on with coronavirus. You know what I mean? And the absurdity is unreal. And the crazy thing is, as, as all these things come out, it's like, oh, it's going to be 3.4%. Actually, it's you know 0 0.26, which is, which is an astronomical miss. Um, be, when we get that information, there's no celebration that like the the psychological operation is complete. It doesn't matter what the new information is. Whatever they want to do to clamp down on this is going to continue to happen. And then this is where I feel like, you know, is it understanding for people to really grasp if you're on the side of truth or darkness or oppression. If your beliefs require another person's submission and you want to have them submit for whatever reason that is, right? You could peacefully ask them to step away if you're scared. No problem. Most people would abide by that. But my beliefs don't require you to do anything in particular other than don't harm me. You know what I mean? Don't, don't try to go actively harm me. Go about your business. And I wish you the best and I'll probably support the things you want to do. But if your beliefs require um, someone else to take an action based on your beliefs, then that's you know, that's where you start to get into oppression. You must do this. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. I can just, I can, I can, I can make a request not a claim. You know, my claim will be, I'm going to remain peaceful over here and you're not going to harm me. If you're going to step into that harm, maybe I'll, I'll give you a duke to the face to piss right off. I'll try to sprint in the other direction first. I got, I got no problem. We don't need to do that. But my claim is don't harm me, right? If you want to wear a mask, you want to wear a hazmat suit, um, you know, then that's, <laughs> yeah. that's, that's, that's cool. And so, yeah, so I don't know. You want to you want to chime in on that, but it's unbelievably absurd what what's happening here. Oh yeah, but it's again, it's 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 people agreeing to stuff, and, and the absurdity of it is more to satisfy a claim. You got to you got to get this. I'll tell you, if you get the claim, the Luciferian claim, in perspective, so that that is the what's everything is being played out everything starts to make sense in light of that like can you that define is, that as you see it? what is the like if you if you could simplify it is it a vague is it a huge or like could you simplify a no. luciferian claim it's um it's i think it's in isaiah i will ascend to the to the i can't um, i'm you know i'm i don't have it memorized but i will ascend to the most high I will sit at the sides of the north. I will be like the most high. That is, that's the, that's the, that's Lucifer. There's a being, like I said, very ancient and for, as far as even before time. Um, wants that spot. If you, if you understand Fibonacci numbers, one of the fives or eights or somewhere in there, like as it goes, do you understand Fibonacci numbers? Zero, one, one, three, five, eight. 13. I don't, but Robert Grant's coming out on Friday. So lay it all on me and I'll make sure he sees the clip. <laughs> it, 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 the Fibonacci numbers uh, more or less follow the phi spiral. So that's the, that's the golden mean ratio, the 1.68, blah, 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 whatever it is. That everything in creation is on that. And that's a, uh, it's an ir uh, irrational, beautiful spiral, but it's, it's not, you can't pin it down. Like you can't, um, there's no point that can be defined because it always ends up 1.68 but like a near like uh, a number that goes on forever so you can never you can never get it you know what i'm saying so th yeah. that's the, yeah well the fibonacci um approximates that so when they were trying to go out on through the through the giza pyramid through the king's chamber oh boy i'm getting into stuff <laughs> <laughs> i don't know mute i just started laughing out loud so yes yeah, so, well i will yeah i'll just yeah no go ahead go ahead oh, yeah so anyway trippy <laughs> they were they were trying they, they they figured out a way to get out and this is all these ancient things they're, they're they've all been trying to get out of here which is another thing which, which lines up with that whole thing so i've heard this, of this i've heard this of these, is a, i've heard of these things it's my opinion strong opinion that we're in a prison i've heard of that too I've I've heard of that from multiple people, but my brain can't share it in a in a way that makes any sense. I'm just like I keep hearing these things, and it kind of feels like a prison to me. You know, it's like it doesn't feel all up free. And there's a there's an appeal from inside the prison from one of the prisoners, and it's the guy with the claim. And so to settle the claim, a being was put here fairly recently which the Bible calls Adam. And now they've got a story about the Anunnaki did that. Like they've got a story about it. And, uh, but that's not what the Bible says. The Bible says he came out of earth. That's why our, 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 um, 
um, our makeup is very similar to the earth's like as far as water content minerals like it, it's like we we are definitely part of this thing and then i don't know what what you know about breath but god breathed into him and he became a living soul in other words god put himself here to satisfy this appeal that being was then cloned into uh so-called two beings one male and one female so but it was the same being because it was an actual uh cloning event the rib was taken out so all these stories like you got to think so adam was put into a deep sleep in other words put under anesthetic something was pulled up like part of his flesh was pulled out they say a rib a bone whatever and then another being was made from that so it's a cloning event they are still the same being so all this feminism and all that stuff forget all that adam and eve are one it's not like one was first or like it's one being literally physically genetically everything like there is no they weren't separate there was they were separate as, as far as their space but there were one being in in all other essence including physicality and, and, and dna all that so the dna of that being is what um is the is the main thing so they were told to, to multiply then there was this event in the in the garden of eden with the apple and that's where duality came in that's where there there was good and evil uh light and dark up down existing not existing like that's where the that's where we got to the we're out of the one thing um we're into a where there's time and space and that kind of thing so in this construct so that being said, then a being called Jesus Christ came down and that's where a lot of people have a problem with, with him. So that was to correct or satisfy the claims that were made against Adam. So there was payment and, and everybody goes payment for sin, but the word sin in the original um, text is the exact same word as debt. So you can think of it, everything is in a commercial term, contracts, commercial, just to, so you don't lose your mind. So, but it's the same, <laughs> it's the same, it's the same print, it's the principles. And, and, and even he was saying it's, it's about principles and, and being a certain way. And the jurisdiction of God is within you. He's, he's trying to tell us like, you're you're in the world but you're not of it like you you're not from here like you 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 you're like wait like wake up be who you who you are in this construct because it's important to satisfy that original claim okay so and default it so i'm with you only kind of and only because i go into some <laughs> really strange stuff and i like jeffrey darty's view on the bible and this stuff and uh, going into the uh the the sumerian tablets and, um, you know, possibly being cloning and DNA and the Anunnaki and going to Egypt and listening to all the different theories of these engineers, these historians, these incredibly brilliant minds. You're like, something is here. Um, you know, uh, pretty much all the engineers and scientists I was with in Egypt is like ETs, of course, like, and they would, they would kind of have their own views on, on history and what's going on here. And so the way that you're sharing it is a new view that I kind of, I've heard and you're piecing the story together in a way that kind of makes sense. Um, and like, then I'll, let me, let me just add something to, to the, to the story that I just told you. Okay. Yeah. Then you were had, you had a near death experience and a voice was talking to you. So are you a construct? Are you a, a piece of machinery that somebody engineered? I don't know. <laughs> no, you're not. <laughs> So not a clone, is that what you're saying? You're not even a construct. Like you're not just flesh and blood. Mm, yep. What is that? Where did that come from? Where does that originate from? That's what I just told you. Oh, snap. Okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, okay. So, all right. Holy crap. All right. Let me try Yeah. See, so you, you do know it. You just don't, you just don't know, you know, and you're buying into all these other things that sound correct, but you actually know because you, you, you experienced it yourself. You just, you told me earlier. 
Yeah. Yeah. And I've, you know, in intrinsically, I've believed that my whole life that I'm, you know, not just a human in a meat sack, like there's something beyond this and I'm more than, than this and not, not in any kind of e egotistical way, just like this, there's like, I'm connected to something. There's something I feel a presence about, you want to call it God, spirit, the universe. I don't care what it is, but I've always felt that. And, um, and I've watched it show up in my life in mysterious ways, but the way that you're doing it or explaining it through like kind of like a law lens, which makes sense because like I said, studying with the Native American elders is very similar language they were using in talking about their histories and what we're dealing with now. And so what I want to ask you is, let's just suspend disbelief and, and explain that story of like the Adam and Eve and what you think is going on in this construct of a prison, just saying like either as a fairy tale or people are just going to believe it. You know, God was a ET and he did this or, or like however you view it and th they were clones because... If, if you've listened to this podcast, you've heard something okay. crazy from a hundred different people. And I just want to know like the simple storybook version from you of like, like how you would frame that. Like what, what does that mean? <laughs> okay. So uh, you were breaking up for me there. So it's probably my internet. My opinion, now this is my opinion on it, based on what I've seen in the Bible, and I went through the, you know, the church um, point of view of it. And um, so I have, I have a, what I call a cognitive bias. But I'm also open minded. And I, and I, and I, and I've been through a lot, like I've been through a lot that I can't explain. And it's for a reason. So now I have a, uh, I have to add all that to that cognitive bias because it all has to fit in order for it all to be true and, 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 and a reality, right? Like um, just logically thinking. So I went through this law thing. So why? And, uh, and I have a really good understanding of it. Not, uh, you know, I don't know everything, but I, I know a lot. Uh, um, there's no doubt about it only because I had to, and I went through it and, so when I put everything together, like when I went back and, and you know, read the old stories, um, I have a different perspective because I have, I've been through some stuff and I've seen some stuff, you know, like even had ex like out of body experiences and stuff. So all that has to now reconcile, like it all, I can't leave one thing out and go, okay, well, this is the dogmatic truth and you need to just ignore that. Well, no, I can't ignore that because that, that happened and I, I can't explain it, but I know it happened. So my take on what's happened with the whole Adam and Eve thing is God put himself here in order to satisfy that claim of who is God. He promised, I will come into this, into your, where I've got you imprisoned. I will literally put myself in a forgetful state. And you see if you can overcome me. I will not act as God. I have the full potential full potential, but I will forget that I've got it. <laughs> so if you could manipulate God and you knew God had this special thing to create whatever you like, you knew it and he didn't. That's what we're in. They need us to create this reality. They have to get us to believe in the mass. They have to get us to agree to it. It's all there. As soon as you see who you are, or start to get an inkling of it, you go, hang on a second here. Do I really have to do that? What if I don't do it? What if I do this instead? And then all of a sudden, your reality starts to affect theirs. It's like, okay, well, who's got the power here? You guys act like you do because you got badges and you know, all the props and stuff, but I'm pulled over at a police stop. I don't have a driver's license and it's a, a liquor stop and I've had a beer. He doesn't ask me if I had anything to drink. He doesn't ask me for my license. He asked me where I'd been. I said, downtown. Okay, look at my glasses, shines a light in my eyes. Have a nice evening.
And I got an airport story that just would just blow your mind, but I don't want to get into it. But it, it's, it was like, <laughs> I, oh man. Well, I, okay. So are you saying with that analogy that we are all like God is within? I like that one. I I'm down with that one. God is within and we are the ultimate authority within ourselves. Then ultimate authority everywhere. We just don't know it. So how do we get out of this thing? Because I've heard we're in a prison before. I heard that change we our mind. We we don't have to wake up and go. Hey, hang on a second here. It's like I, I don't. Th- I never this saw like this movie. Leave, is this like a leave Earth type of scenario? Because I've heard like we die right, and then we hit this border that's in like space or something, and we get recycled back in. That sounds terrible. It's not you don't you're not into that. Okay, good. <laughs> I don't. I don't. Like I, don't, that one. I, I, don't <laughs> I don't. I don't think that's actually true, but. Um, because th- these are all all constructs to make us believe certain things that there's limitations, right. and any, anything limiting is like I'm going no no no. I mean we're in a limited. Actually, we're not. There's a construct that makes us believe that there, there's limitations here. But even within that construct, the jurisdiction of God comes in here, and you can just change everything. That's why Jesus could walk on water. It wasn't it was no miracle. We go miracle. He's like no, you just walk on water. It, it was it was the same as walking on the land to him. Like he didn't he didn't conjure it up. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so do you think that these abilities um, to be supernatural or godlike are? You know, I've heard that. You know, uh, it's in the Bible too. They say you speak it and then it happens, like an apple. You know, we could speak and then an apple could appear. Do you believe that that is possible? And if so, what kind of time frame are we talking about here? I don't, I don't know um, about like manifestations and, and the and the and the quickness of it. I think we're in a slowed down version of of um, how it really is, for the reason that we would just because we're like babies um, with with a machine gun. We we would you know we would destroy ourselves. Ring any bells? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So it's slowed down so that you can actually. Um, analyze what you're doing and you know adjust yourself that's it's it's kind of like that so at a certain point things move faster once you become i don't want to say i don't want to make it sound like it's some kind of magic or anything like that it's as as more as you become more experienced with it um being who you are and like none of us have arrived i haven't arrived otherwise it wouldn't I wouldn't be here. That's my theory. I, I think I would just be, you know, into the one whole thing. So the, the fact that I'm still here means I've got something like I'm not there yet. So, but there's a lot going on and there is that voice that is leading a lot of people all at one time. And, and the left hand doesn't know what the right hand's doing. And this is on purpose so that the, the, the original, the original claim, you can't go, you acted as God. Therefore, let's go around again. I still have my claim. You, you can't act as God. I have the right um, in a free will universe to claim your throne. And see, and the, and the original, like the real almighty God is just in, in like cannot be unjust, cannot be, um, doesn't cheat can't would actually have to look at that claim you got to see see it for what it is it's like a manipulation if you're god and you're just then i should have be able to claim your throne and he would have to go that's that has to be true how are we going to do this that's why i went into the story of god would have to be in in some kind of state where he didn't understand who he was Wow. That's, that is a, that is an unbelievable way to like frame what is going on now. My mind is, is shattered. I remember talking to my friend, uh, Gerald Clark, and unfortunately he's, he's passed on only, you know, three, four months ago, but I remember him chatting to me about some similar stuff. He would talk about the Anunnaki and like ancient stuff and just blow, just shatter my mind. And so the question I want to ask you now is, what do you, th- I've heard about this guy, uh, Russell J. Gould. Have you heard about that guy? 
Do you think he's legit? Because he's talking to, like because he does like uh, the quantum grammar sh- construct, and he was teaching this stuff from a long time ago. Then uh, my friend Bear Lando was on the show, and he said he trained with him and uh, David Wen Miller, and they were going to do the Hawaiian sovereignty movement using understanding law. Like there's other people out there talking about law and and how that works. And um, he said that they won in court, but they didn't honor the agreement. And that's when he lost his zest for it. But he learned a lot about the language and he, wa- he watched judges change their robes. Is that a thing? I don't like it. for this stuff. I don't even know like what is going on, but it does seem like there are clues out there of, of people like I usually have a good idea if they're like full of shit. And if they've got like a track record of years and you're looking at them, you're like, there's something to this, you know? So I'm just curious if you heard it because he's saying he's the postmaster general. And I find that fascinating. I think he, I think he might be. Um, I've never spoken to him. I got a feeling I will end up running into him because, like I said, God is putting stuff together, and pieces are here and pieces are there, and and it's all gonna form this thing, which is gonna be unbelievable, and, and nobody can deny that there's uh, an intelligence beyond belief that did all this. Like I, I, I see it. I already see bits of it. So um, that said. I, I did study the quantum language a little bit and people wanted us to do our documents in that, but we're following um, a, uh, a chapter in Revelation, Revelation 18. If you just read the whole chapter, there's two commands in there or two instructions. And one is come out of her so you don't take part in her sins or debts. And the other one is take the cup that she's been giving you, fill it double and hand it back. And that's what I do. So that's, that's, that's what I'm here to bring into the reality. What does, a that lot of people, huh? what does that mean? Just I'm taking, I'm taking what they've done to you. Like I explained, they turned us, they turned you into a merchant to take advantage of you. I'm, 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 I'm telling, I'm showing people how to be a merchant. Got a document ready. Just sign right here. You're already a merchant. Bam. Um, you fill the cup, take their stuff hand it back to them, make them drink it. That's the instruction. So if they're trying to give me poison, they're going to get double poison. Got it. And it's their, it's their move. Like it, this is a checkmate move. Like it, it's, um, it's, it's Aikido or jujitsu or whatever you could. It's, it's their thing that you're just whew, turning back on them and they have to take it because it's part of their, part of their argument on this claim. Right, like the way the way that they've constructed it is going to be their own demise. Yes, and it's based on our ignorance. Yes, it, it ends up being the 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 snake eating its own tail. Like it, you, you just become nothing because you everything is now that you've set up in order to win is now being used against you, and you can't say that God did it because you did it. And the only reason why it got turned on you is because a guy like me who. And that's fair game. I can, I can discover this and, and do it. Oh man. <laughs> just, uh, well, this is giving me some hope, man. Cause I've had so much despair and it's funny because like you're blowing my mind, but again, like fragments of all this stuff, you know, I'll watch a whole documentary just to learn like one thing that you're talking about. And you know, I'm like, I can't remember the whole documentary, but I remember this feeling. And I remember like this little piece of information, you know what I mean? That, that, that makes sense. And then there's this other puzzle piece. And I was like, well, that kind of fits together there. And um, so, you know, a lot, you're kind of like bringing it together. And a few people are able to do that. Even like Michael Tellinger and his, you know, one small world and just, just cool stuff like that. And how long I remember how I met him was at the disclosure thing. His book is like, you know, four pounds and then that's got like multiple books i was like how much research and studying did you do just to get this and he would just share some of his views and and what he had learned but you kind of see like people who are you know what are you trying to get right if you look at uh this thing is so friggin obvious to anybody who's got eyes and common sense and willingness to look up right like look up vaccines and Gavi, right? I didn't, I'd even look up that. And, and, uh, you know, I was like, Oh my God, you, you just, you see a whole money trail. You see people in power and you say, okay, let me look at Tedros. Is this guy awesome? And like did so much humanitarian work to get to where he is the world health organization that 
you know, looms over the whole planet. And you're like, well, it looks like he has a bit of a shady past. What about Fauci? Is this guy amazing? Why are all these people like saying this? And, and, and he's contradicting himself here. And, oh, there's this money trail here too. It's like, it's just, it's so obvious when you look at it. And then on the other side, you have people where they're doing stuff and they're committing to uh, making a difference. And I, you know, I'll, I'll bring up Robert Kennedy Jr. You know, like maybe he's a little bit on the political spectrum, but when I read his stuff and, and what he's putting out there for children's health defense and how he speaks, it's like, you know, he did a debate on vaccines versus Alan Dershowitz and he was just standing in truth. And it, the energy was just so different when, when truth speaks, um, against or or in a debate versus baloney and ignorance and propaganda it just you, one side is completely obvious but we got to know what the game we're playing is and the game right now is rigged and you through your process have kind of understood that right you're like oh you thought you know you were in a boxing match but actually it was a sword fight so you walked in there you're like oh crap and that's you going to jail right and you're like damn i didn't know i could bring a sword and you're like ha, i got a sword this time and then next time he's got like a guy behind you, he's like well actually you can have two guys in the ring like, oh, i didn't know that one either right and you kind of learn it by getting your butt kicked and then you're like oh but you guys do have to abide by certain rules and then i can play and now we have equal power but the way that you've set it up bad guys is that i'm more powerful than you and you've 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 basically tied the noose around your neck that's kind of yeah. an analogy of how i'm understanding this like you got it it was like a, it was like a chess board checkers board i was playing checkers on the board because that's what i thought it was and they were playing chess and I'm going, well, you, where'd that move come from? And they're just like, because I'm thinking I'm winning, you know, checkers. Yeah, boom, 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 boom. And then all of a sudden, what? you can't do that. And part of that code is to never tell you, right? The, this part of they this is never all secret. Tell. No, they, they will you know, it's, it's like so secretive because that's where the power lies is in this information. Yes. And so when I went to a, uh, went to a uh, seminar, so I'd already been in for a couple of years and, and I got my, like I said, got my butt kicked. And even though I was winning, like I had, I, 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 you know, I was pretty strong in there. Like they, they, you know, like I don't think I had winning arguments in statutes, but I was losing because I was playing the wrong game and they weren't telling me that they were just, no, oh, you lose. And like, what do you mean I lose? How, uh, based on what? No, lose. They wouldn't. So when I went to a, a commerce seminar, it was two days of light bulb after light bulb after like every, about every 15 minutes, I was going, Oh, now I see it. Oh, that makes sense. Oh, that's why I lost. Oh, 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 here it is. This is the, <laughs> it's like, I see it now. Boom, 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 boom. So I'm just imagining you in your chair, just like in this bliss of epiphany. <laughs> it's like, Oh yes. Such... It all made sense because I'd already been through it. I had the black eyes and the pepper spray and the punches and the jail time. And so I went, Oh, now I see where, you know, if that's the game. Yeah. Obviously I was losing because I was arguing and I was doing all these things. So the very first move, in commerce, same case running, same, like my life hadn't changed. I'm, I'm still in it. First move in commerce, well, judge runs off the bench as I'm coming in the door. I went, okay, well that I have not seen. <laughs> and I didn't know what it was because literally I thought, oh, he has to go to the bathroom or something. That, that was my first thought. Didn't think it had anything to do with me. I was just like, well, he just ran. And everybody in the room was surprised. So I thought, oh, maybe he has diarrhea. Like, I, I you know, I'm just like, because he just got up and ran. Like, and the, and, the, and the sheriff went, all rise. Like, all rise? Like a question? He says, we're taking a break. And I'm like, well, you just called my case. You know, I wasn't thinking any of this. I'm just going in my case. But as I thought back on the day, well, they just called my case. Why would they go to a recess? Because they just called my name. That's why I came through the door. So they weren't planning a recess when all of a sudden there's a recess. It's like, but I couldn't catch up to, you know, I wasn't uh, with it enough. So you got to understand, I was just fumbling through this. But that was the day where things started to change. And then it was just growing and figuring out more and then starting to tie all the spiritual things into it. And then I, and then you start to figure out, 
you know, this whole construct that I'm seeing down here, it's actually parallels what's going on up there. And I can see there's somebody has had this ancient claim. And I went, hang on a second here. This is all starting to make sense that this is all about that. And so you just, you know, experiment, look, test stuff out and you go, mm, yep, this is what's going on here. Well, you know, for me, I think I, I heard it at the beginning and now the light bulb is a little bit clearer if I, if I understand you correctly. It's almost as if you found the original claim of the slavery on the planet because this is ancient stuff. If you look at, you know, like, again, if I just think about my own life and I observed at 15, I was like, why the hell do we still have war? I was like, this doesn't make any sense. You know, I was like, why do we have starvation? I was like, this doesn't make any sense, you know, and this has been my path. And those two questions, you know, I wanted to live a good life and have fun and, and be free. And I was like, why are these so many constraints? You know, why, why are so many people hurting? This doesn't make any sense. Like who is, who is doing this? And nobody looks at the systems and you look at these evil, these systems are evil. They are Luciferian and satanic by definition. And so it seems like, if I'm getting this correctly, there's an original claim of that construct. And however, if they built it in this realm that we're playing in life, they've had the power at the highest, um, at the highest echelons of, of influence and have just been imposing it on us, uh, making this claim through the systems, like why we have to go through the court, right? Why we have to do these things. We're just existing because they, at the top of education, at the top of media, at the top of the church, at the top of, um, all these different places. And then we're like, okay, we'll go along because we know this, but only a small new group knew kind of what they were doing. And you could call yeah. them cabal or Illuminati or I don't know what you call them or what you think. Yeah. Well, there's, there's a story in the, in the book of Enoch, which was taken out of the Bible. And once you read it, you'll go, Oh, I see why they wanted that out of there. But this being Adam, they knew um, that who he was. They tried to breed in to get the God gene. And that's still happening today with the CERN thing. They're still trying to get the, the God particle. That's all real stuff, man. I've heard, again, I've heard glimpses of that. That's interesting. <laughs> and like cloning and yeah, they, they, they want to, and I don't know, it goes into like adrenochrome and stuff like that. I don't know what to deal with that. Ever. All of that. Yeah. Awful. All of that is about trying to get, um, on top of God through this being called Adam and his DNA. And, and so, so that, there's a half breed is once you get this in perspective too, because it took me a, a while because I kind of went, I wonder if there's, you know, these half breeds are still here. Cause I read, I knew the story in the Bible, but I thought, I wonder if they're still here. And I wonder if they're in charge of everything. Like, like you just explained head of this corporation, head of King of this print, you know, president of that yep it's, so actual blood they, it's an actual did, bloodline yeah is, it, is there 13 is there more well there's 13 see the fibonacci numbers they follow those numbers so even even jesus had um 12 disciples and he was 13 and um they follow those numbers because that's that's where the strength or the power is or whatever how are all that works I, i'm not an expert on all that stuff but i know i know there's something to it so there is there there will be a, a group of 13 which everybody's heard of but there will also probably be a group of eight and a group of five and a three and a two and then a one and then there's the one, one all-seeing eye that's how they would have set it up so would they have been regular human beings that tried to inbreed like how do they how do they what are half breeds there, there was there were some beings called the watchers who were um and this is probably where the anunnaki um stories kind of come from they were supposed to just watch not not um interfere and probably to watch for this claim i would almost guess like to satisfy this claim for whatever reason they got they bought into the the spirit here or whatever they bred into the daughters of adam so i don't know how many generations were around but they they bred in is this like the like the nephilim story and the giants yeah wow and now they're finding giant bones all over the place and even you know petrified giants up in the mountains and they look like rock formations and they're like perfectly formed humanoid proportions like that's 
okay so and anybody anybody that goes to get a sample to see if it's actual rock or if it was organic uh, you know the don't yeah. come in here don't look at that why yep so i was gonna i was gonna ask a practical question but i can't now because you keep <laughs> you keep over to have new doors um so what's your view on just like ETs now? They talk about disclosure and space project and there's so much stuff, right? They say they're coming here, all kinds of stuff. Just what's your general synopsis on extraterrestrial life? They declassified uh, CIA stuff about the ship, right? The Fravor thing. That could just be human technology we don't know about, right? Because they obviously don't tell us everything. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to, like I've had some experiences, like out of body experiences. And there was a voice that identical to yours, except it sounded like me, that told me how to do it. And the whole time I'm like, who's talking? <laughs> so I know what you're talking about. Yeah. Is it trippy? Yeah. Like, what is it? You think you're nuts, well, right? You would, no, I, I wasn't nuts. I, I was like, I was in a, my body was asleep, but I, I was conscious. And I'm like, and I was told, go here. And I'm like, why have I got that idea? Like, what, what does that, what does that mean? Like, who's, who's saying this? I have no, I have no context for that. Stay here and be quiet. Like what? And I'm like, who's, who's talking? And I was traveled and I went to a court and that's where I started to piece together the courts down here are just uh, a copy of those there. And then I read the book of Job again. And I went, hang on a second here. Cause I'd read the book of Job many times, but looks like there's a court um, outside of this earth because the judge most high said um, to Lucifer, who was, who was able to show up in that court, where have you been? Oh, I've been on earth. So that means this was not on earth. Cause he was talking about earth in a third person type over there. Right. So I went, there's, there's courts and, and we're probably supposed to be there and we don't even know they're there. So I, I've been there. My point is, I traveled and I was not in a metal thing. And if I'm a novice at this, I'm thinking like, you know, as far as how we understand the universe, we're pretty, um, we're still at the war stage. So we're, we're not advanced. I mean, we're advanced in some ways, but really come on, like we can't even get along here. So if there's more advanced things out there, if there isn't out there, they don't travel in metal machines. Because I didn't. So then I start to question that. Why, if they're more advanced than me and I can travel without it, um, and I was traveling, why are, why are they, why are they, why are they in these craft? Because it's more about consciousness. You can just go and you, and there's, there's actual pathways look like, well, I guess what we would call wormholes. I don't even know what a wormhole is, but I've heard that in the, in the movies, right? But, but it looks like that. It's like, it's literally lit up and it, and it takes you to spots. Like it's, so when I see that, and then, uh, you know, in, in recent times, you know, this whole flat earth thing came up and then, uh, you know, the NASA, NASA stuff came up and I started, and I, I'm not neither here nor there on flat earth. I don't, I don't really care anymore because it's like this thing isn't even anywhere, in, in my opinion, anywhere near what anybody thinks it is. And, I, and when I started seeing the NASA stuff, I went, they've never been to the moon. They have not been out of, they're stuck in this thing, whatever it is. Like they, they're, they're not going out there. There isn't, and there might not be an out there in the way that we understand it. This construct, this 3D construct may be, a construct that's inside something that's not even 3D, that has no time space um, point of view. Like we have no idea. So it, the whole space um, alien thing for me 
is is up in the air. I'm open minded, but I've also seen some pretty good holograms of whales coming out of floors. And I mean, you can't tell the difference, right? So, so I know people are seeing stuff, but what are you seeing? Yeah, yeah, that's a really, really good point because the way that the holograms that we're aware of how good they are and how our mind works is phenomenal. And so if there is technology that we don't even know about, how good could they create some sort of illusion? Right. And, and uh, our general focused perception, like even if it's like, okay, everybody focus really hard and we focus as hard as we can, it's still pretty crappy overall. So, you know, I'm reminded of this uh, Spider-Man movie and that's the, the bad guy uses these drones and the holograms and he thinks he's fighting this thing and it doesn't, it just projects a hologram. I'm like, absolutely possible. Absolutely possible. So we don't know, you know, and so that we don't know what's going on. And so then this goes back to kind of magic and psychological operations and um, aversion, right? Magic is like, look here. So maybe we're looking at like the alien thing or some other thing and we're giving our attention there. And that's the most special, awesome thing that we have. And so if we're distracted at this thing, then we can't be focused on the thing that might be robbing us or has got the hand behind our back or that's pulling the wool over our eyes. And so it's very important what we put our attention to. So I'll, 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 I'll this is a good segue for the question. I want to ask you, you know, Cal's uh, protocol for freedom. How do we do this? I, like, what do I do? I got that notice. Like, where do I start? What do I do? How do I be free? How, what limits can I get to? I, I, I'll put in the, if you can give me the protocol, I'll go do it. And um what was I going to say with, yeah, I, I can't remember where I was going to go with that, well, but just how yeah, do we, it, well, what do we do? Yeah, we have a, we have a document series and what it, what it creates. If you just sign up, you can literally just sign your name. It, it, it's written in a way that you don't have to have any knowledge whatsoever. That said, the more knowledge that you gain, the more you will change the reality around you. We've just seen it too many times and it wasn't planned. It's just what's happening. I'm just, this is just through observation and people coming back and saying, I read the document 20 times and my life has changed. And like stuff is moving away from me and I, I you know, and it, it, and it starts to filter into the rest of their life. So it's, it's like that. It's um, it, whatever's happening is happening on on a lot of levels. So if you just get engaged and you actually you know go at it and and read the stuff, um, you'll you'll start to change. You'll you'll see it and and you'll you'll start to become adept at it. Like we've got people, we've got quite a few people who are not wearing masks, and nobody notices. Nobody bugs me, but I'm also a, a bald guy with a big, huge beard. <laughs> I am too. But we've got women who are, are literally going into stores and it's like they're invisible. And this is, not, this is not just one or two. This is like a lot of people are experiencing this. Like, it's like, it's, and they're saying, it's like they can't see that I don't have a mask on. Sounds like some esoteric stuff, like breaking, breaking the matrix, you know, and again, for me, the reference is like, even if you look at Darren Brown's work and what he was able to do through like hypnosis and mis misdirection, he would just take people's wallets from them. You know, he does amazing stuff, check him out. <laughs> and I know it's real. I've seen other people, you know, do it as well. And like, just what, like what the mind does. So who, who knows the limit of this thing It's a very um exciting thing i think a lot of people would would believe it's unbelievable so the the first step would be just go to the document and read it because you know think about the oldest saying ever knowledge is power right and so if we can if we can have the right knowledge um applied you know we can hopefully have more free like you know you go to a court and you don't know what you're doing then you learn what to do then you have more freedom um to make a better decision of your own friggin volition like you know, what, why do I have to talk about freedom of wearing a mask or not wearing a mask? What do I have to, what do I have to put up with all these ridiculous legislations that I did not sign up for, or, you know, I'm a free, free human spirit. I don't even know what the hell I am, but you know, I didn't sign up for this nonsense. You know, yeah, I, I didn't you, agree to this. Yeah, you, but you did. And that's the thing. So 
But <laughs> all right, well, I need the other agreement. <laughs> yeah. So what? So what? Uh, what I've done is I understand that. I'm not saying I agree with it. I just I get it. I, I see what they've done because I, uh, I went through it too. So I'm going okay. I agree. I've agreed to all this. I'm your slave, but I have I have certain or actually I shouldn't say I'm your slave. You turn me into a merchant and then you put me in this merchant game. I now realize it. Here's my first move. You have to stop bugging me or you owe me a million dollars a day. That's your rules. <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah, that's it. If you don't answer, then you've agreed to this. Well, you can't do that. That's what you did to me. You even turned me into a merchant. Dare you to say that I'm not a merchant. Dare you. I can use merchant rules because you turned me into a merchant so you could take advantage. How do you like me now? Uh, yeah, my address is right here. That's where you send the check. Otherwise, get out of my reality. And my reality is quite large. By the way. Because I, I also learned a bunch of other tricks about words from you. <laughs> it sounds fat. You know, I'm going to, I don't know. I'm going to look at it. I'm going to try it. Yeah. I got to let people know where I get it. It's, it sounds amazing. Um, you know, even Tom Barnett, who's going to come on the show soon, he's kind of blowing up. He's talking a little bit about it in, in Australia. So there are other people, um, executing on this idea. And I feel like the more info, cause I don't understand it. And I'm, I'm, I'm going to try though. And I remember being in law class and, um, one of my, uh, professors like, yeah, I don't pay tickets. And I, I, I don't know if I'm making this up in my own mind, but I know for sure. He said, I don't pay tickets and I'm pretty confident. He said he didn't pay taxes. And, and we we're just like, what? I was like, what are you talking about? He goes, I don't recommend that you guys try that. You will definitely get screwed. You know what I mean? He's just like, you are not gonna, you're not gonna figure it out. He's just, just like, because we're asking, he was just show, he was, he was probably one of those good guys. Cause he was showing us all this baloney that was there. And we're just like, we're, we're training to be police. Like when I was younger, I, you know, I want to try to make a decision. I want to help people. I thought I want to be a cop for a minute, which I don't, but I want to, <laughs> I want to help people. And this guy was just always kind of just being like bringing to light how ridiculous it was and how we basically didn't know anything. And it's like, it's not at all what you think it is, is the meaning. And every day will be like that. And I, I think I got 50% in this class. Everybody failed. He did a, he did a test and uh, the average grade was like 52 because it was so hard. But, uh, you know, but that's how I have like context of what you're saying and, and how it's applicable. And so I guess it would be frightening for people to actually do this to, to risk jail or something like that, right? You well, know? again, like uh, I've been there. So I've written the document when when josh asked me to write this document i went okay i'm going to be dealing with people who have no idea what's going on like i have to assume that you have to go to the lowest common denominator you know nothing and if if i gave you anything you would just stick your finger in the socket and you and you'd be blown up that, that's <laughs> yes, that's I how i do that <laughs> that's how it's written so that all everything that i know to keep somebody safe is in there automatically follow this and follow these instructions do do it in this order at this time and from everything that i've seen all the mistakes that i've seen other people make and all the mistakes that i've made this will go through and they can't they can't touch it and it's so, the same for canada and us and because australia is getting uh getting it really bad right now. And Rocco Galati, the Canadian lawyer who you're probably familiar with, he, I saw him on an interview and he was just talking about how Australia and Canada are the test grounds for basically the new world order draconian rollout. So whenever they want to do something terrible, they test us to first and then they move on to the other places. And so right. 
freedom here would be fantastic. Yeah. Well, it's still, it's still a Commonwealth country. Both of those, well, you know, Canada is not even a country, but it's, it's a British colony. So still under the queen. Oh, she has an oath, a contract. Maybe I should read that. See what she has to uphold. Bible. So there's Bible in there and she has to uphold it. She, and not only uphold it, she has to defend it. And if you look up the word defend, it's, it's, not, um, it's not a passive word. Okay, well, I'm going to do it. So, so what else? Is that it? Just get the document? No, and, and like, well, we, we, what we have is a uh, community. So, and, we, and it's a pay, paid community. So $15 a month or 10 if you sign up early or whatever it is. And it's not about money. Um, the site uh, that we, the platform that we're using co has a cost per user per month. If, you, if anybody comes in and clicks on anything, there's a charge for it. So that's just how it's set up. But, but they can run all, um, they have the unlimited space that we need. They handle, can handle all the languages. Uh, there's a bunch of reasons why we chose them because this thing's probably gonna explode and, and it has to be able to handle it without, um, so they can do it. It's dynamic, there's a little bit of AI in there so that, that uh, as people come in and, and start to um, post stuff or teach stuff, it will, um, as more people go to it, it, it enhances it more. So it can, it can grow organically. There's not, so it doesn't have to be a, a you know, follow me thing. Um, it's a, we want it to be as organic as possible within, you know, within reason. But um, so in there, there's, there's teachings, there's a lot of, of um, things like this. And then I've done quite a few podcasts just for that, for that group and a lot of question uh, and answers and um, a lot of documents, a lot of research documents that you can get that we vetted. And uh, so you can get, so you can start to go down some rabbit holes that, that will enhance your growth to, to grow out of this thing. That's, that's what this is about. We're just creating a, trying to create a community and a vehicle for people to start to realize who they are without getting into any kind of religion um, dogma or anything like that. Just like, follow these principles. Then the documents themselves are aimed at four agendas. That's the smart meters, 5G, forced vaccinations, and geoengineering, spraying in the air. Because those are all the weapons that they're using right now in concert, like they're all connected, all being done commercially. It's not a military doing any of these things. It's all... Um, corporation so it's all commerce so that's where that's their weak spot that was their they were hoping it to be their you know the ultimate way to get our agreement because it's all contractual and it's all um commerce but it's now their achilles heel because um i could see it and then you know i just only and uh, because i'm great only because i went through a long series of stuff where i can see what how it did and i tried it and then just so happened that I knew Josh and he did a movie on thing and like all these synchronicities. So it's, it's more than uh, like, I didn't plan my life 15 years ago. I was not thinking I'm going to be doing this thing. Like it wasn't even, not even a, an inkling of it. Just how my life went. And it's more, so it's more like I was called to this than, than I'm trying to do this. I, you know, it's just how it is and um, just trying to do my part. So that's what th this is about. We're trying to create more. The community is more important than the document. Uh, the document is important, but it's the, it's the learning and learning together, learning how to get along with each other. Not like how Facebook is right now where it's, <laughs> you, you see, so that that's causing, um, that duality to be stronger and then, you know, more lines being drawn and all that stuff. We're trying to create, we're trying to create the new thing. This is how we want to live. This is how we want to have banking. This is how we want to have money. If we want to have money, 
this is how we want to do um, all these things. And we don't need you. What, what, what were you bringing to the table? Oh, oppression and you just took all the money? Uh, no, thanks. <laughs> it's literally like that. It's like the emperor has no clothes. And once everybody sees it, it's like, why do we need you? Why are we listening to you again? What is it? Yeah, that's what I thought. Just because your great, great, great grandfather said so. What does that have to do with here and now when, you know, we're, we're starting to wake up and we realize, we're realizing the mistake we've been making and now we're correcting it. It's just that simple. We're going to change our mind and they, they cannot do anything about it. Once you see that, like what you alluded to is that if they hypnotized us, our minds into creating this, that's what I'm saying. Even the, 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 the darkest thing that you've, you're aware of, it's you. You're not participating in it like, you know, but you're, it's all one thing and we can literally, you know, turn away from that. And, and the reality, reality has to rearrange itself accordingly. It's just how it works. We just don't know it. <laughs> Amazing. Amazing, Cal. Absolutely mind blown. Uh, I'm excited. So I'm going to dive right in and check it out and, and start digging around and, and uh, see what I can do. But this has been extraordinary, um, to say the least. But uh, thank you so much for what you're doing, man, and, and persevering through that, that time. If there is a divine force, I feel like we're all uh, playing our role by, you know, being honest and authentic. And then, you know, it seems like a lot of people had to go through a lot of crap to acquire the wallet, the knowledge that they needed, and then that can help others. And I feel like right now it's an opportunity to participate. What world do you want to participate in? Do you, you know, do you want to participate in one that has, you know, this set of guidelines and legislations and rules or this one with a different understanding and a different belief set and a different um, set of like guidelines or suggestions that everybody can agree to that are probably common sense that are life affirming that are supportive and we need that. And so if we're in this binding construct and what you've done can, can help us out of that because it's, it's the thing that we're being ruled by that is unbelievably extraordinary. So I'm excited to help and stay in touch and, and, and go down this rabbit hole. So just thanks for everything. Is there anything that you wish that I'd asked? I'd talk to you all day, but anything that you wish that I'd asked or you want to want to leave the listeners with uh, anything at all? No, just, you know, be honest with yourself. Don't be afraid of, you know, yourself. And even, even though we all still make mistakes where we can, we can literally change ourselves and then chair, which would changes the world. And it sounds really cliche, but it's actual fact and it can be proven in quantum physics and all different, you know, there's many ways to prove this, like your thoughts, and your actions based on your thoughts change your reality and then there's a collective reality but the more people that go in a certain direction and that's why that's why they're trying to keep us divided because if we start to coalesce that becomes the the group mind and the rest of it has to follow just look at a flock of birds they all move at once And if you're in that flock, you cannot not do it. Mm. It would be mayhem if one decided, well, I think I'm going to go straight while everybody else is turning. They, they all, but they all move. <laughs> We're the same. We just don't know it. They've tried to separate us through countries, race, religion, like, so that we don't coalesce. And we're trying to do the opposite. We want to coalesce and create a, uh, a group mind, for lack of a better word, and, and that has different principles. And people will, they feel safe there. And they feel like, yeah, this is home. Like, it, it starts to become that. And then the more people that do it, there's nothing anybody can do about it. We just change the whole thing. 
100th monkey syndrome, whatever you want to call it. It just has to be done. Like, like you know, there has to be some, um, you know, boots to the ground. Like you have to actually make it happen <clears throat> to a certain degree or at least create the vehicle so that it can happen, you know, and then just let it, let, let it be. We're all in this together. I know that sounds cliche too, but, um, and we're more one than we think we are. Amazing, man. Well, I'm excited. Uh, thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank you for the work. Um, so they go to inpowermovement.com. Yep. That's where they, and then you get into the portal, you start going in and, and diving in and, and see yeah, what comes you, out. Yeah, you can, you can get into, a, you can get, get a membership there and then dive in. There's, there's some stuff, you know, available, but, um, and we're in transition. So I don't know where stuff is and I'm not the techie guy. Trust me, I'm not. <laughs> Well, we, well, I know that there's an email list there, so I'm sure that's where they'll be able to figure it out. And yeah, and yeah, email, yeah, you can get on an email list. list for sure, and um, that's growing daily, and membership is growing daily. Like it, it and with no, we, we're not doing it. No, like we're not promoting anything. It just, it's just happening, and so you know, it's not anybody doing. Like it's not me or anybody else. Like it, it, there's something more going on here, and th and we're not the only group there's other things going on too that all everything's kind of you know just starting to fit together and you can see you know, this is multifaceted and uh, it's exciting time to be alive it really is once you get past the fear and actually start to see the positive that's going on because it's kind of almost secret or, or um quiet it's done in a very clean clear nice easy just, um and once you're once you're sort of part of it then you you take on that thing and I, I have no fear of everything that's going on and believe me i've you know when you do these documents you have to dive in there and see some of this stuff like the 5g technology is like very few people know the depth of it and it's there's something you know i'm not scared of it but there's something to be scared of I just know it's not going to work because I can see that it's coming apart faster than they're putting it together. That's all. It's, it's just a perspective. I can see which way the tide's going. So I'm not worried about the flood. Yeah. The, there's a potential if the tide kept going in. Yeah. That my building would be flooded, but I can see that it's going out. So it's like, yeah, I'm good. That's, that's comforting. Cause I've gone into some of the 5g stuff and every time I go in like to one, I'm like, Oh man, it's worse than I even thought before. <laughs> Son of a, you know, every single one. And so I'm glad the tide is going the other way, but it's stuff like this. And so let's, yeah, let's do it together. But uh, amazing, amazing stuff. I, I'm going to dive in. Um, I'll, I'll invite the listeners to check it out. And um, just thanks for what you're doing, man. I'm excited to be rowing in the same direction that you are. And yeah. uh, anybody who else is, is down for building a better world, you know, jump on board. Me too. Good, really good to meet you and, and talking with you. This is uh, very enjoyable. Amazing. Well, thank you so much. Uh, we'll get you back on the show, but thanks for everything you do, man. I appreciate it. All right. Okay. See you guys.